So if we have the function y equals 5x minus 2 over x squared plus 1, and we want to find the derivative of that, um, then I'm going to use the notation dy over dx. It doesn't matter whether you use that or y prime. I'm just trying to keep on mixing it up. Okay. So quotient rule says low. So x squared plus 1 times the derivative of uh, high, low d high. Okay, bottom times the derivative of the top. The derivative of the top is just 5. Minus high d low. The derivative of the bottom is 2x. And that's all over low squared or the bottom squared. Yes. Now, you can put the 5 in front of the x squared plus 1, and you can put the 2x in front of the 5x minus 2, but yes, the 5 times x squared plus 1 has to come first, and the other one has to come second because of that minus sign. Okay. Yes, ma'am? To the bottom function, yes. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we do want to clean this up a little bit. Okay. Uh, distribute the 5, so we've got 5x squared plus 5. Distribute a negative 2x is how I look at it to make sure that I get that negative distributed. So that becomes negative 10x squared plus 4x. Now I am not going to multiply out the bottom. Okay, I'm going to leave that in factored form because every once in a while we run into the scenario where we can factor and then we can cancel. That's not going to happen for us today, but um, or in this example, it may happen at some point in time today. But <clears throat> um, 5x squared minus 10x squared is negative 5x squared plus 4x plus 5. Okay. So that is an application of the quotient. We have two functions and a quotient, and that's how you find their derivative. Okay, so we get another one. f of x is equal to 3 minus 1 over x over x plus 5. Now, if you look at this, and it, it's hard to look at the way that I have it typed there, so I'm going to rewrite it. <clears throat> we have a quotient within a quotient. We've got 1 over x within this big quotient. So there are a couple of different ways that we can handle this. Personally, I would suggest using some algebraic manipulation uh, from the get-go so that we don't have to deal with another rule within our quotient rule. So what I mean by that is I'm going to get rid of that 1 over x by multiplying every term here by x. Okay, remember back in pre-calc when we dealt with complex fractions, we could get rid of those little denominators if we multiplied every term by that denominator. So an equivalent expression here is uh, 3x minus 1, because the x is cancel there, over x times x plus 5. And I'm going to leave that in factored form. Okay? This is an equivalent expression to that or original expression. Um, And actually, I said that I was going to leave it in factored form, but I am going to multiply it out because we're going to have to take the derivative of that. I don't want to have to do the product rule within the quotient rule. So if I distribute the x, then I just have power rule. Okay. All right, so we haven't done anything dealing with the derivative yet. We've just rewritten our expression so that it's easier to take the derivative. All right, so f prime of x, the derivative of this function, is equal to low, okay, the bottom, x squared plus 5x, d high, 
the derivative of the top, the derivative of the top is simply 3, minus high top function d low, the derivative of the bottom is 2x plus 5, it has more than one term, so I have to make sure that I put it in parentheses. All over the bottom squared. Um, now I am going to go back to my factored form here when I square the bottom just because I may have some simplifying that can be done later. <clears throat> okay, let's distribute in the numerator, see if we can combine some like terms. Distribute the 3, we get 3x squared plus 15x minus, now I'm going to have to FOIL, so I'm going to put a set of parentheses because after I FOIL, then I'm going to, bless you, then I'm going to have to apply that negative, okay? I don't want to do it beforehand because a lot of people get confused. I get the question all the time, well, do I put that negative in both sets of parentheses or just one of them, okay? Technically, you can put it in one of them. If you put it in both of them, then you've got a negative one times a negative one, which is a positive one. You've undone what you were supposed to be doing. Yes, Preston? No, because of that minus sign right there, you cannot cancel. The, the other term, the 3x minus 1 and the 2x plus 5, it would have to have the same thing. Okay, um, so let's FOIL. Okay, 6x squared plus 15 minus 2, so plus 13x minus 5 over, um, I'm going to distribute that squared, so that's x squared, x plus 5 squared. And square the x and square the x plus 5. Continuing on with the simplifying, we've got negative 3x squared plus 2x plus 5. So 3x squared minus 6x squared is negative 3x squared. 15x minus 13x is 2x minus a negative 5 is plus 5. Now, I think there may be some potential here for canceling out a factor. So I'm going to factor that numerator. Uh, first of all, I'm going to take out that negative. I don't like factoring when there's a negative leading coefficient. It makes life more difficult than it needs to be. So I'm going to take out the negative. And then, let's see here. 3x times x gives me 3x squared. And the only way that this is going to do me any good is if... Um, the 5 goes with the x. Um, let's see if it works. Did I just get, mm, let's see here. That should be minus 5 and plus 3. All right. No, hang on. I totally screwed that up. That's not how that factors. The 5 goes with the 3. There we go. Um, so it's minus 5 plus 3. It does factor, but nothing cancels. I thought something was going to cancel. But it did not. So that's it. That is our derivative. That is f prime of x. Yeah, it's supposed to, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, just one thing that I want to mention about notation. Notice um, how my notation goes. When I start taking the derivative, I make sure that I write down some derivative notation. In this case, f prime. I start by where I just do my equal sign. I don't write it down every single time. Now, I'm fine if you want to write it down every single time, um, but then I make sure that at my last line, that notation pops back up, okay? 
Okay, that's just my way of telling myself what this expression truly is because we're going to eventually get into some problems where we're using a first derivative, we're using, um, we're getting ready to look at second derivatives uh, next week. And so we're going to be using several different derivatives and original functions, and you need to know what each of them is so that you're not getting them mixed up and confused and you know what you're supposed to be using, okay? Um, so just make sure that you're clearly labeling things as you go through these problems. <coughs> okay, so a couple more examples. We've got a function y equals negative 3 times 3x minus 2x squared over... 7x. Now, before we take the derivative, I'm going to kind of do a little bit of not really manipulation, but I'm going to do some algebra here. But I'm just going to distribute that negative 3 so that we don't have to worry about applying any additional rules uh, throughout this problem. So we've got negative 9x plus 6x squared over 7x. Does anybody see anything else that we can do to simplify this problem? Yeah, we can, there's a GCF. There's an x in the numerator, not just the 3, but there's an x in the numerator. So if we take that out, then we can cancel that with the x in the denominator. And guess what? This isn't even a quotient rule problem, okay? It's set up to look like a quotient rule, but it's you don't even have to use the quotient rule, okay? Um, because there's not a function in the denominator. It's just simply a number. So we could continue to write this. Um, we can write that as negative 9 over 7 plus 6 over 7x. That is really truly what this problem boils down to. So y prime is simply 6 over 7. Now, if you went through the quotient rule and you simplified everything as much as it needed to be simplified, you should get to that same answer, but I promise you the simplification through the quotient rule is going to be a whole lot more difficult than just simplifying it algebraically to begin with. Okay, So look for things like that. They don't come up very often. Um, but every once in a while, you will come across a problem where you can simplify things a lot in the beginning, and it makes life a lot easier down the road. Yeah, that's just power rule. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What? Simplifying or the derivative? Is this a quotient rule problem? No, it's not, okay? Because 6 is not a function. 6 is just a constant term. There are a couple of different ways that you can write this, but I would write it as 1 sixth x squared plus 1 half x. Okay, you just put both those terms over 6. You're decomposing the fraction, <clears throat> and 3 over 6 reduces to 1 half. So when we take the derivative of this, g prime of x, it's just a power rule. 2 times 1 sixth is 1 third. So that's 1 third x plus 1 half is the derivative. Now, yes, if you had done the quotient rule, you would have gotten there eventually. Um, but it would have been a whole lot more work than just this. Okay, so recognize when there's not actually a variable in the denominator, you don't have to use the quotient rule. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, the derivative of a constant is zero. Yeah. So that's a good question. Um, if that had been flipped, okay, if that had been flipped over, if that had been six over, um, let's say that this were six over x squared plus three x. Okay. Now, you do need to use the quotient rule here because you do have a function. Let's go ahead and do this one. Um, that's a good question, okay? Um, let's do this one. Let's find the derivative of this function, okay? Um, low d high, well, the derivative of a constant is zero, 
minus high d low 2x.